Grace and peace to you on this third Sunday in the season of Easter Tide. I'm Reverend Cindy Carr, the senior minister of First Congregational Church of Watertown, United Church of Christ. We are a congregation that welcomes people of diverse backgrounds, orientations, and faith experiences. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome with us here at First Church. This time for online worship is being brought to you by the deacons of the church as a way to stay connected in faith and maintain a spiritual focus as we navigate these uncertain times. As a congregation, we remain compliant with the stay home, stay safe directive. We urge you to do the same as well, practicing social distancing. We expect to be worshiping online through some time in May, but we will evaluate the best options to keep our community safe as that time approaches. Today's message is one of hope and encouragement as we consider the good news of Christ's resurrection. The story is a familiar one for the Easter season, the appearance, appearance of Jesus on the Emmaus Road. For our service today, our music director, Eric Trudell, has prepared wonderful Easter music for us to hear, and our video production team, including cameraman Ian Pettigrew and editor and web designer Jim Gowell, have prepared the video. We hope this online experience of worship provides you with a message to brighten your day and to deepen your faith. And I love hearing from you about what moves you in worship. Many of you have contacted me by email to let me know how this experience is for you, and I truly appreciate the feedback and the ideas. Just a couple of announcements as we begin. Uh, a reminder that each week I send out a message from the minister. It arrives by email or by regular mail for those without email. We have church school activities available for the kids via email and a weekly devotional for adults. You can call or email the church office if you'd like to receive these. And our deacons continue making calls and checking in with members and friends who might be in need. We've had a great response from people willing to help with things like grocery delivery, sending cards, and so on. We have a great congregation that knows the importance of outreach at this time. And we have groups like our standing committee, personnel, open and affirming, and deacons that are meeting in virtual spaces like Zoom and WebEx. So we're all in touch and so our church stays strong. Remember to check your email and our church website for any further announcements. So let us begin with prayer. Would you pray with me, please? To honor and praise you, O oh God, we come in gratitude and love. We come to celebrate, celebrate the renewal of life and the joys and good news of this Easter season. With great joy and amazement, we remember the victory of our Savior, Jesus Christ. May it fill our days and inspire us for works of love and peace. We raise our voices in praise and thanksgiving for your incomparable gift of love revealed to us in Jesus' resurrection. Amen.
first scripture reading for today comes from Psalm 116, verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 19. For me, this psalm illustrates the synchronicity of God's timing in our lives. I didn't go out of my way to pick this specific psalm for today, but I relied on our regular schedule of scripture readings that we call the lectionary to provide the theme and the readings for today. So here we are in the midst of a pandemic. We've had numerous members and friends of our congregation seriously ill with the coronavirus. We've been praying daily, sometimes hourly for their recovery. And this sh psalm shows up in the lectionary. Psalm 116 is a prayer of thanksgiving for recovery from illness. It's an important reminder that God hears our prayers and stands with us in sickness and in health. Hear these words. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol laid, Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I do to return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. May these words inspire you and bring hope to all who are suffering from illness. Even when we are staying home, there are ways that we can reach out. God calls us to live generous lives, to share the resources we have, whether that's the time that we have, the talents that we can share, or financial support of the church's ministries. Each of us is on a journey in this life, but it is made more meaningful when we can share the journey with others, when we gather our resources and send them out to make a difference in others' lives. We have many ways to practice generosity in these days. Please continue checking on your elderly neighbors and friends and family members and see what you can do to help in these days of social isolation. If you can, please pick up a few extra items when you're at the grocery store and donate them to Watertown Social Services. The food pantry is desperately low on food items. And remember your regular giving to the church, which supports all the ministries we do together. You can donate online or sign up for e-giving on our website or you can mail in your regular pledges and offerings to the church office. Let us give generously for Christ's sake. For all that we offer into the world, in time, talent, and treasure, I offer this prayer of dedication. God of mercy and blessing, we give to others because you have given to us. We use the gifts you have bestowed upon us to help where we can. We use the resources we have earned to help ease the suffering and distress of others in need. We share our time to be with friends, family, neighbors, and strangers so that loneliness and despair cannot win. We ask for your blessing not only on what we give, but also upon us, so that in giving, we are made even more generous and our hearts remain open. In Jesus' name we pray. As we enter into this time of communal prayer, together, though apart, I encourage you to remember those in the community that are uh, suffering from illness of any kind, uh, those who dedicate their lives to helping them, and for your own needs uh, as well, to remember to lift them up to God. So let us be together now in prayer. Our loving Lord, we are gathered in worship to praise you, to give thanks to you, to offer ourselves to your service. We bless your holy name because you have given us the gift of life and the gift of awareness of you. 
We may not always see concrete signs of your presence in our lives, and sometimes we even have doubts about your ability to hear our pleas. But you do care, O oh God, and you are present to us, and you make yourself known to us. We pray today for the friends and members of our congregation who are fighting illness and dis-ease. We pray for those dealing with the coronavirus, but also those who continue in their fight against cancer, diabetes, and other ongoing illnesses. We pray for the nurses, doctors, healthcare workers, all of whom are caring for so many that are sick. We pray for grocery store workers, sanitation workers, police and first responders who continue to provide the essential services that we rely on. We pray for moms and dads, grandparents and kids as they navigate, navigate life that now includes home teaching, a full-time job feeding their families, and at the same time, so many who must still figure out how to work from home. We pray for restaurant owners and servers, stylists and nail technicians, retail workers and small business owners who may be out of work and struggling to make ends meet while unemployed. We pray for those who are suffering from anxiety, those who may believe their freedom is curtailed and want restrictions lifted too soon, those who may be battling depression, dementia, disorientation, all in the midst of this pandemic. Empower us, O oh God, to minister to the best of our ability, to bring change where we can, to fight for justice where we are able, and always to be vessels which bring your good news and love to others. For these and all things we pray in Jesus' name, as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel reading for today centers on another one of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, this time told in the Gospel of Luke. The setting is the first day of the week, here meaning that same Sunday when they found that Jesus was missing from the tomb. It's later in the day, and two disciples named Simon and Cleopas are walking on the road from Jerusalem to the town of Emmaus. And as they are walking, they encounter a stranger. Hear these words from scripture. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. 
Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked him, What things? They replied, the, Jesus, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and to crucif be crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Some of the women in our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who told him, told them Jesus is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. They said to him, oh, how foolish are you and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted the scriptures about himself to them. As they came near to the village which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and then he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and found the 11 disciples and their companions all gathered together. They were saying, the Lord is risen and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what happened on the road, how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. May God's wisdom be added to our hearing of these holy words. Please pray with me. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations in all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Not long ago, as I met on Zoom with a number of other colleagues, I apparently surprised one of them. She looked at me on the computer screen, there I was at home, and she seemed confused. The moderator of the meeting asked if she knew my name, and while she did remember my name, because we had taken a class together and worked together in focus groups, she wasn't making the connection. And then it hit her. Oh my gosh, it's you, she said. I didn't recognize you. You look so different. You look great, but different. The truth is, I may be only two years older and my hair is a little different, but it was the context. We weren't in a church or even in a classroom. I was home, dressed casually, and the lighting was different. So between whatever changes there really were in my appearance and the different context, she didn't recognize me right away. I've had that kind of thing happen before too. Maybe you have. Understandably, it happens more when we are distracted, not thinking clearly, or when we're in a state of grief. We might run into someone we know, but our life has been turned upside down by whatever events are happening and things don't click right away. There's too much else going on. Well, on the first day of Easter, there were two disciples walking along the highway from Jerusalem to a village called Emmaus. <clears throat> they were maybe a few hours out of town, just a couple miles, when an apparent stranger approached them. In those days, on unpatrolled roads, this could have been very dangerous. There were robbers and thieves often in hiding, waiting to attack. But this stranger did nothing of that kind, though he did inquire what they were talking about. As the disciples explained the day's news from Jerusalem, news which they were shocked this stranger seemingly hadn't heard, they revealed to him that their beloved friend and rabbi, Jesus of Nazareth, had been crucified but was now missing. 
They said that the women in their company company had seen angels at Jesus's tomb who told them that Jesus was alive. And when the disciples went to the tomb to see what happened, it was just as the women said, Jesus was gone. But then the stranger turned things around on them. Instead of feigning ignorance about the day's event, the stranger explained the events to them. He interpreted the scriptures, which the disciples both knew, in light of the news. And then as they were about to part, the disciples invited the stranger to stay with them and eat with them. After all this time, the stranger's identity was still unknown, though the disciples were intrigued, and they obviously trusted the connection they were making enough to invite him to stay with them. But it wasn't until this stranger prayed and broke bread with them that their eyes were opened and they knew just who was sitting right there in front of them. It was indeed Jesus. And what the women had said was true, he was alive. But Jesus was also very different, so different that they hadn't recognized him all this time. In so many of these post-resurrection appearances, Jesus is reported to be noticeably different than he had been before. He hadn't survived the crucifixion and been resuscitated. He went through some mysterious kind of metamorphosis. He was resurrected from the dead. His spirit could be recognized by them as they became closer, as they broke bread. But at first, his body was not recognizable. What the disciples hadn't realized is that once you go through something profound, it changes you. You're just not the same. Jesus had been through an extraordinary experience. His body had been raised from the dead. He would never be exactly the same. He was now transformed and living in a new way in this new life. In many ways, the disciples wouldn't be the same either. Their lives were about to be radically transformed by this event. And in some ways, they and their ministries would never be the same. These days, we are all going through a transformation of sorts, too. Our lives have changed dramatically. We miss the way we've always done things. We complain that nothing feels right. We want the comfort of being able to do life without rethinking every move. We want our old life back, even though we had a thousand complaints about it way back when. Even those who like to be at home are feeling a little bit stir crazy. Others are reacting to the need to be socially distant over time by defying the orders to stay home, demanding that they keep their freedom. Others still try to convince themselves that they won't get sick or that it's just not that bad. And too many are feeling like they just don't want to get out of bed on some days. Experts are telling us that these are all reactions due to the trauma of the pandemic. We have no clear schedules. We're terrified of getting sick. We may know someone who has died or is on a ventilator due to corona. People have lost their jobs, they've had to apply for loans, they're seeking unemployment compensation, and the lines at the food pantries are unbelievable. These are all forms of loss, losing normalcy, losing routine, losing the ability to be self-sufficient, losing the illusion of control in our lives. So we are grieving. It may not feel the same as when a loved one dies, but loss of any kind, whether it's the loss of a job or a dream that goes unfulfilled or a feeling like you've lost your footing is all grief. In the wake of Jesus's death, the disciples were experiencing the trauma of grief and they didn't recognize Jesus at first. In our circumstances during this time of trauma and grief, we may not be able to recognize Jesus either. Nothing seems normal. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. And while we don't see Jesus in the same way that the disciples did, we are used to seeing and experiencing Jesus in certain ways. For example, we're used to hearing Jesus speak through the beautiful music of worship and in our prayers on Sunday mornings gathered in our beautiful sanctuary. We're used to seeing Jesus in the faces of the children during the children's message. How often we have loved hearing their responses and seeing their joy in church. We're used to reconnecting with Jesus as we reconnect with our Christian friends at coffee hour, as we attend meetings, 
even as we make crafts together. We're used to thinking of Jesus standing right next to us as we serve at the soup kitchen, as we deliver flowers, as we visit church members, as we work at the food truck. But now all of that has changed. And as we move forward, much of it will never be the same. We may have to alter how we meet, how we gather, and how we connect from now on. Does it mean we won't hear or see or stand in the presence of Jesus anymore? No, it means we will learn to see Jesus in new ways, ways we may never have imagined possible, yet ways that will be just as meaningful and powerful. As this pandemic goes on, Jesus keeps showing up in ways we didn't expect, but it's still Jesus. We have card angels who send out cards to more than 35 people in our congregation, letting them know we care and we're thinking of them. Children and elders have taken on this ministry and it's flourishing. We have phone angels who make calls to many of our church members to check in with them, to see what they need and to let them know we're praying for them. We have tech angels who are giving precious time and energy to get us up and online so that we can hear scripture, hear the sermon, pray together, enjoy music together, even when we are apart. For many who can't get to church on Sundays due to illness or work or distance or scheduling, this has been a godsend. People are feeling reconnected in new ways. And we're reaching many people who've been to our church either only on occasion or perhaps never before. We also have a long list of grocery angels, people who have volunteered to pick up groceries and help get items to Watertown Social Services, people who are donating food and gift cards, who are delivering meals to those who are struggling right now. So you see, in so many ways, Jesus is more than alive in all our forms of outreach. He is active through each of you. But here are some other ways that Jesus keeps showing up. Our committees who do so much important work in and for the church are meeting online. Some of the committee members struggled at first with using a computer or figuring out social media, but others have stepped right up, gently encouraging and tutoring their friends so that all can participate. I've needed some coaching myself, and I absolutely see Jesus alive and at work when someone explains to me how to move into a gallery view so I can see everyone, how to connect my audio, how to send files in new ways. So it's not just me and a church member. Jesus is right there in the midst of all of us. The children and their families are spending time together working on their church school lessons. Jesus is there sharing faith in the families. Trustees, finance, and generosity are working hard to help us monitor the building, to track giving, to keep an eye on expenses, to apply for grants, and to keep our financial house in order. Jesus is there in this important work. Volunteers come to the church each night to ring the church bell at 8 p.m. to let the whole community know that we stand with them and that we believe in the hope of the gospel. And Jesus is in the hearts of those who come here to ring to get the word out. And so many people are connecting through social media to pray for those among us who are sick, not just with the coronavirus, but with any illness at this time. Jesus is right there beside each one who sends prayers, sheds tears, lends a hand to support those who are discouraged. This pandemic has changed who we are as a church. It's a traumatic event resulting in grief and sadness for so many. But it is also a time to blossom with hope in new and unexpected ways. We have the opportunity to see Jesus, to find Jesus, to recognize Jesus anew in different ways, to share our faith and our story. While no one of us would wish for a pandemic in order to experience these gifts, we are grateful for the ways in which God is pulling us through, standing with us, breaking bread with us, and calling each of us by name to become the body of Christ. The resurrected Jesus is showing up somewhere in your life too. Have you seen him? Did you recognize him? I'd love to hear about how you see and experience Jesus in this time of pandemic. I urge you to be in touch. Let me know what you're experiencing 
And let's share some of this good news together. Thanks be to God. Amen. sisters in Christ, receive this blessing. May the good news of Jesus Christ go with us all. May we be light and life to the world. May the risen Christ go with us and fill us with strength and courage. Share the faith, keep the promise, speak a kind word, live the gospel, and bring peace to all you encounter. In Christ's name.